Hello and welcome to the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for both looking and feeling our best, brightest, and most energized, radiant version of ourselves. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission here to help you achieve and receive just this. In today's show, we're going to be focusing on the topic of night creams. Do we need a night cream? Now, pretty much every skincare line out there has a night cream. However, have you ever seen me recommend a product that's specifically called night cream? No. And the reason why is there's actually a couple of different things that we can do at nighttime in order to really kind of target specific things we're wanting to focus on. And some of the key things to actually focus on at nighttime isn't just about using a night cream, but I'm going to talk about two different creams that I do recommend you have on hand briefly. And that's a lighter moisturizer for the daytime and then a heavier moisturizer for the nighttime that you're actually going to be using alongside retinols, peels, and dermal rolling, or even sometimes during the day, if depending on the season that you're in and the climate and what your skin feels like because you're doing things like retinols, peels, and dermal rolling at night, you may want a heavier moisturizer during the day. So in a nutshell, do I think that you need a night cream? No but I do recommend having a lighter moisturizer and a heavier moisturizer on hand. Hey, Delilah, let me know any questions you have as we move along on the topic of night creams. Now that that's out of the way, I feel like there's a lot of marketing gimmicks in the skincare space, which I find really annoying. And you all know, if you've been a long time listener, that I'm a huge fan of not really being a consumer However, there's still things that we are going to need in our daily life, like housing, like food, and we're going to be using skincare to, and sunscreen to moisturize and protect our skin so that our skin doesn't feel irritated and dry, doesn't feel good. There's going to be some things that we do buy that are outside of the essentials that I would still consider essential in order to care for the largest organ of our body. But the skincare industry and the rejuvenation industry are a multi-billion dollar industry that continues to grow year over year. And it's a very appealing industry actually for hedge fund and investors, for hedge fund investors rather, and people wanting to diversify their portfolios. So if I've been seeing something over the last couple of years, it's this trend for lower quality skincare and backed by a lot of marketing. Now, one of the key things to consider is, is the product backed by marketing or is it backed by research development and education? And this is something that I've been seeing since I started in the industry as an aesthetic nurse in 2011, that there's a lot of marketing and there's a lot of like buzzwords that go into the skincare industry using things like organic or clean or natural or chemical free. Yes, as close to organic as possible, but there's so much more that goes into skincare product formulation than just like being free of the ones that we want to avoid in particular, parabens and also chemical sunscreen filters. We definitely want to be avoiding those and shifting more towards mineral sunscreens, which I have lots to choose from on the Always Radiant Skin Shop that you can find over at theschoolofradiance.com. And I actually wanted to share a little bit more about what I recommend doing at nighttime instead of just using a night cream, because what we wanna do is actually first think about what do you wanna tackle? What is part of your skin goals? Do you wanna target redness, dryness, make your pores a little bit smaller, fine lines and wrinkles, pigmentation like sunspots or age spots or red acne scars or acne scarring or even sagging skin to the jawline. What do you want to focus on? Do you want to have the lens of, yeah, there's some things I want to do and I kind of want to do some rejuvenation for and just kind of like mask the problem, which at the end of the day is kind of what injectables do. They don't really necessarily do anything to promote healthier skin with the exception of some biostimulators on the market that actually lay down a framework for more elastin and collagen to bind to. 
But in general, neuromodulators, yes, they relax the muscle, they allow for fine lines and wrinkles to soften, and fillers restore lost volume, say, for example, the fat and bone that we lose, but they don't really do anything else to the skin. Sure, hyaluronic acid fillers can add to a degree of hydration. Now, I think a better strategy is really to day in and day out feed your skin and focus actually quite a bit on energy-based modalities and doing things at home to target. What I mean by energy-based modalities are things like lasers. And lasers are a huge area. There's tons of different types of lasers on the market for pigmentation, for collagen that are fractionated, that are radio frequency based, that are ultrasound based. There's so many different options available. Things that use cold, things that use heat, things that you have no downtime for that you, or that you have a little bit of downtime for. It really just depends. And just a little warning here that lasers actually carry the highest risk of litigation in the medical aesthetics industry because there's a lot of really subpar and even fake lasers on the market. Same with injectables. There's actually quite a few counterfeit injectables. That's why if you are doing rejuvenation, you have to go to a board certified practitioner. And it's also up to that practitioner to be practicing responsibly and purchasing the products directly from the manufacturer, not just from these third party sort of like brokerage sites, because actually because I'm so well weaved into the industry, this does happen where practitioners unknowingly purchase counterfeit products. And then there's all sorts of issues with that. There's also issues with those who have say underlying autoimmune conditions or nutrient deficiencies, or their oxidative stress status is elevated. This can lead to those message boards or things done inappropriately, wrong product, wrong placement, wrong patient kind of situation, creating this issue. And, you know, I am invested and involved in the world of obviously the holistic side of things, but also the very much rejuvenation side of things. So I hear both perspectives and positions and the pros and cons that show up in both. And at the end of the day, if you are going to do rejuvenation, you really want to make sure that you are at your healthiest time because rejuvenation whether it's non-surgical injectables or lasers or even surgery are going to be requiring a degree of healing. And the last time I had fillers, which was a couple years ago, my HRV tanked, which was my heart rate variability, which showed me that even something non-surgical does require a degree of healing in the body. So that's a little bit of a in-clinic perspective of sort of what we can do for some of the commonly seen things that occur in the aging process. However, I'm such a huge fan of home care. And for myself in particular, I used to have to do lasers once a month for red acne marks. I'd have to get hydrofacials once a month for acne. And I'd also do lasers very regularly because I was getting sunspots or pigmentation. But now with healthy living, the biohacking, reducing oxidative stress, sleeping better, and all the other exciting things that I teach in the tutorials with like how to use your products and then the membership for some of the deeper, more psychological, emotional, energetic, and spiritual layers, and also just how we show up in our countenance. There's so many things that we can do to actually make ourselves more beautiful and attractive. So I'll open it up for questions on the topic of night cream. For those of you who are here live, this is a great time to engage and ask some questions. I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee with protein and collagen. Ooh, that is so delightful. So one of the commonly asked questions, okay, do I need a night cream? No, my answer is I'd rather you focus on using things like retinols, peels, and dermal rolling. And I'm gonna explain why. Typically a night cream that you find has retinol in it. However, I actually recommend something called skin cycling. And one of my clients was like, oh, Rachel, have you heard of this term skin cycling? And I was like, no, I haven't. This was maybe like six months ago. And I was like, this is a brilliant term to describe what we can do in the evenings to give the skin different things and stimulate the skin in different ways. Hear me out on this. I actually have a whole lesson in my tutorials that are happening now. So register now over at theschoolofradiance.com. Don't miss out. Secure your spot now. We go live every week. It's really fun. And I teach you the how, what, 
about skincare and actually how to apply your products that I obviously can't do in a consult or a recording like this. I have to wash my face and do dermal rolling each session. That would be so much uh, that just wouldn't really be feasible. So with retinol, that's typically in a night cream, what retinol does is it helps to speed up the cell turnover because our skin cell cycle slows down as we age. That's why taking things like NAD from Qualia, you could actually head over to qualialife.com forward slash radiance and use code radiance and save on your NAD. The youngest people, the youngest looking people that I know, and I hear a lot of my colleagues talking about this too, that those who are taking NAD look younger. And what NAD does is it actually helps with the mitochondrial function. And I actually just put some methylene blue eye drops. It's called Blue Eyes. I'm doing a little bit of a trial on this before I you know, fully recommend it. But I'm all about feeding and nourishing our cells. And what retinol does is it just helps us speed up that cell turnover. But also with each of our cells, we have mitochondria. And if your cells aren't functioning well, they don't have enough ATP that's being produced, your skin is going to look a little bit lackluster, and you're probably going to have a little bit less energy also. And of course, key nutrients that the skin needs and also your whole body in general, because your skin's a reflection of what's going on. Protein, collagen, antioxidants, and omegas are definitely some four key nutrients you want to be giving your skin. But retinol and vitamin A is something that's been backed by decades for being beneficial to the skin, but not everybody can tolerate it. But what it does is it speeds up that cell turnover. So it leads to like this refinement of the skin of fine lines, wrinkles, pore size, and can even help in some cases with acne. But it matters what that night moisturizer with the retinol is buffered with. Is it gonna to be too intense on the skin? Is the concentration of retinol a little too high? And are there things buffered in there to mitigate the retinoid reaction phase? So that's typically what is in a marketed quote unquote night cream. But I actually recommend going for uh, not so much just a night cream, but something that's like legitimately a retinol that's, buff that's buffered with other antioxidants and peptides too. So you're not just putting retinol on the skin, you're putting other things on at the same time to really feed and fuel your skin. The other thing are peels. I love to do peels overnight that I'll actually sleep in. So I'll wash my face, put my eye cream on, put one of my peels on the skin, and then my heavier moisturizer on over top. So that's again, helping with things like pore size, fine lines and wrinkles, and even acne. And there's a couple of different peels that I have at different strengths. And then for dermal rolling, this is, this is such a great tool because it's inexpensive. You can get started with dermal rolling and your serums for a couple hundred bucks and your basic routine, your essential routine, that's going to be on top of that, of your cleanser, eye cream, moisturizer, sunscreen, and scrub. Dermal rolling is not something you want to jump into in the evenings without first establishing your essential routine in the AM and PM, and then start to use the right dermal rolling serums, like for example, the copper peptide and vitamin C that I have on my skin shop that's specifically designed to be used with dermal rolling. And then after you do your dermal rolling, you can put your heavier moisturizer on over top to kind of feed, nourish, and calm the skin a little bit. So I'd rather you invest in retinols, peels, and a dermal rolling routine than just a night cream. All right, Delilah has a question here. Not a night cream question, but I'd like your opinion on wearing EMF protective clothing while driving an electric vehicle. Is the EMF protective clothing sufficient for this? Okay, I actually love this question. And I, I know you've stated it's not related to a night cream. But this show, you know, we talk about skincare, but we also talk about the lifestyle side of things. Because to have great skin, your body and your physical form, your body, mind, spirit, energy has to be on point. You have to be healthy. You have to be sleeping well. Your hormones have to be in check. If those are not in check and there's an imbalance, then what happens is your skin's going to show it. And also when your body is undergoing higher amounts of oxidative stress. So just to give you perspective, I'm going to answer your question because it's a really good one and something I think about actually every single day and do something about in regards to EMS every single day. So this, this is actually really helpful. 
But really, to have great skin, I would be doing you a disservice to just talk about skincare, especially with my research that I published last year in a medical journal. I published a number of papers. I do so about maybe one a year over the last few years. And I'm really honored to do so and then be able to speak and present on these topics. And because <laughs> I've been doing all this work online, I'm definitely getting noticed by the biggest companies in the rejuvenation space. And for years been have been reached out to for contractor roles and I've done some in the past and I'm just like really pumped about what's happening now in my professional career side of things. And also for you here, like keep supporting me, keep purchasing products, joining my tutorials, joining my membership, booking your one-on-ones because I really have to take a step back and evaluate what is going to be the best use of my time and energy. And what I do here is definitely a passion of mine. And I know I'm helping so many people provide clarity as to what those essential and then advanced layers are. And then the deeper sides of things in the membership, which I utilize to actually attract and receive and excel in these beautiful opportunities that come my way. So because of that, there's just been a ton of movement just to give you an update, actually. Longtime listeners, you're going to love getting the updates along the way. <laughs> that over the last three weeks, I've gone through incredible shifts in every aspect of my life, literally every single aspect of my life. And my favorite F words are our family, faith, fun, freedom, fitness, and finances. So every single aspect of my life has had a degree of shifting over the last three weeks, which has been really intense. And then I helped my sister out and house that for her and her cats and watered her garden with multiple zones of irrigation. It's just like this ginormous garden and uh, actually had a little bit of a response to the cats and the kitty litter. And just with all this movement, I actually developed a rash on my neck. It was like dry, scaly skin, almost like an eczema. And I just knew that with forest fire smoke, with renovations, that's why my studio here isn't quite set up yet. And just a lot of movement and new opportunities, all for the good. I just want to reassure you all that all of this movement has been for the good. And it's actually what I've been asking and praying for in all honesty. However, God's not going to give you everything that you desire and ask for on a silver platter. He's first going to test you and make sure that you're deserving and that you can handle it. I just had a feeling, though, during this process that my oxidative stress status, my toxic bucket was getting a little too full and the cats and the kitty litter, I feel like just kind of tipped it over. And if you are living in a place where you are getting forest fire smoke at this time, you really want to ramp up your air purification. And I also, during that time, knowing that I just had this feeling like something's going to give, and it was actually my skin. And why the neck is significant is because of the location of your clavicular lymph nodes. And we have these lymph nodes throughout our body. And actually, in lesson one of my tutorials that I film live, you can engage and ask your questions and they're related and specific to each season. I actually teach you how to do lymphatic drainage. And then I was in the sauna wearing my EMF clothing all the time. So we're going to get there. Trust me, Delilah, we're going to get there. But really like life is full of different stressors. It's full of different obstacles. Life is always happening. However, what we should be moving towards all the time is having more peace. However, if you're feeling a little too comfortable, it's also a sign that you're not growing. And with growth comes growing pains. And it's how you deal with that. That's why people who are successful, they're really good at managing stress. They know when to push and they know when to slow down. And for women, this is even more pertinent because women push when we give birth and then we rest. So we push for short periods of time. And if you push too long and too hard, especially as a woman, you're going to crack. And uh, this is also where mental resilience and having a faith and, you know, doing things for self-care, like saunaing, like taking your supplements, grounding, getting your red light therapy, 
and moving your body and expand, ex basically expending the built up energy is really important and to do things that bring you joy. So for myself, I'm really excited here because uh, where I am now, I uh, just did a whole bunch of renovations. So hence the toxins. I'm going to be able to finally play my guitars again without headphones and kind of rock out a little bit and play the piano, actually a piano that my grandparents bought. And it's just so beautiful. So music is really fulfilling to me and getting into nature. So I'm sharing these things to inspire you. I also think I might start to do some painting. Uh, and I love writing. That's like, I love writing research papers and speaking because I know I'm doing something of service to help others, but it's really important when you are of service to make sure that what you're giving, you're also getting back and that it's a, it's an equal exchange. So just wanted to put that out there for those of you who have been you know, really enjoying the free content here. I really do appreciate your support uh, in all ways, your words of encouragement and also monetarily working with me. So EMF clothing and EMF mitigation and EMF bedding is so incredibly key and I'm thrilled, Delilah, you brought this up because EMFs are like this new toxin that I would, you've probably heard me say this before, that I truly do believe that EMFs are like the smoking of our generation. I truly believe that. And if we look at the data sets of deaths of unknown cause, which I do so in Canada when I'm looking at doing research, like what are the things we need to be aware of? And I do this as a researcher. I look for signals in the data set. And deaths of unknown cause continue to double year over year. We had a doubling in 2019 here in Canada, and then again in 2022. And that data is taking forever to get published. Actually, the 2022 data uh, got published fairly recently. And I wasn't happy to see that deaths of unknown cause, or rather autoimmune diseases, so basically things that can't really be explained, are becoming more prevalent in our society. And so I wrote that research paper last year to really create an awareness with practitioners to really do that good faith health exam every time a patient comes in to make sure that they're well and you're not doing rejuvenation if you're a practitioner when someone isn't feeling good. And the EMF stuff is huge. So when I work with a client online or in the clinic and they're wearing a smartwatch, Something I really noticed in these individuals and also those who live specifically in California, because when I looked at the amount of cell phone towers in, say, the Beverly Hills area compared to the West Palm Beach area in Florida, there's three times the amount of cell phone towers in that specific area. You actually search how many cell phone towers are in a given area. So my friends, my dear clients in California, you kind of get blasted a little bit and a little bit more than other people. So the EMF mitigation is really important. And what's also really important is my family history. And I'm actually just shortly after this going to be interviewing my uncle. He just wrote an incredible book. Uh, he was an officer. Well, he basically drove ships around the Atlantic and he actually wrote the war plan for Canada during the Cold War. And he just wrote an incredible book. Longtime listeners, you know I love to read either personal development books, like I have Matthew Hussey's book here, Love Life. And then I love to read espionage novels. And why I like to read espionage or kind of like military books is it because it actually it actually highlights things in your surroundings that could potentially be a threat. And as a woman, it's really important that we always feel safe. So for the guys listening, keep your ladies safe. Make sure that they feel protected by your presence. And the EMF stuff is kind of like this invisible threat. But we're learning more about it. What EMFs do? Wireless cellular radiation, EMF from holding your phone, EMFs from sitting in your Tesla, and all of the smart technology is not making us more smart which is the irony about it. Same with the, the smartwatches and all the smart technology. It's actually making us more dumb because our brain isn't getting as much oxygen as when we are grounded outside and our red blood cells aren't undergoing morphology sticking together and our blood's moving in a sluggish way. Clotting factors are forming and then your blood 
isn't flowing and carrying oxygen and nutrients to your organs like your brain, like your skin, or carrying away toxins in an efficient way that are then going to get filtered through your liver and kidneys. So that's sort of like the mechanism and the physiology of why EMFs impact the body, and they do. I mean, the tinfoil hatters, <laughs> you know, we used to think of these people as being the nutters, right? That, uh, you know, had their internet hardwired into their computer and didn't want to use Wi-Fi, having, you know, the soup of a field around you. But now, honestly, it's just, it's something that we have to be around for me to show up sitting in front of my computer here, it's kicking off just as much wireless cellular radiation in a field than me sitting next to my router. And that's pretty significant. So the question here of actually being in a, an electric vehicle for long periods of time, I've seen people with their EMF readers have it going in say their Tesla and then have it going in front of their microwave while it's working. And if you've ever, you've probably never thought about this, but the, you know, that glass plate in your microwave, it kind of has like three little prongs so that I can, at the center of the glass circle can connect to the center of the microwave to spin it around. Those three dashes is actually the same symbol for radiation. <laughs> I saw that the other day and I just about fell over. It's like, okay, yeah, they're telling us there's a lot of radiation in here. So the thing about driving for long periods of time in an electric vehicle is that you're literally sitting on top of batteries that are just working hard and they're kicking off these massive fields. So if you are wanting to go through life feeling a little bit more protected, knowing that there's this threat of EMFs around, wear silver protective clothing. I do this all the time. I'll, I'm wearing this beautiful white linen dress right now. I love this. It go, it's a midi length, so it goes kind of just above my ankles. It's very fitted. It's kind of off the shoulder here. And then I'll pair it with a, sort of like a brown belt, a little gold in the middle on the buckle. And I love this outfit. Linen's actually a really high frequency fabric to wear. And EMFs, EMF protective clothing is weaved with silver. So it actually helps to protect and shield your body. I'm sure you've heard about, you've, you've heard me say this before here on the show, that I wear EMF protective clothing all the time. I wear it when I sleep. I wear it when I travel. And I also have EMF protective bedding. And if I'm traveling, I'm wearing my clothing while I sleep. So my recommendation, or what I would do rather, is if I had a electric vehicle, which I number one wouldn't get, and all of my vehicles have always been older because number, number one, I don't wanna pay the money for a brand new car because as soon as you drive it off the lot, it's a depreciating asset and I don't like having leases. I like to minimize my monthly expenses and don't wanna be living outside of my means, which so many people do. And the thing about an electric vehicle is they're really popular. Say, for example, where I live here, Teslas are honestly like the most common car on the road. And there's some issues with temperature variance and the battery performance in the heat or the cold. And so I like older vehicles that don't have the Bluetooth that are really low in EMFs. So that's something that's really important to me. Yes, they're going to be going through fuel, but to power those um, those electric charging stations, <laughs> they could be powered by a diesel generator that's nearby. So it's, it's this whole like interesting thing about electric vehicles being more efficient. You're not paying for fuel, but you're paying for a very expensive vehicle and who knows really how long those batteries are going to last. And then you have to replace the batteries. We still don't really know this yet like how long those batteries actually last and the durability of those vehicles. So I'm curious to see how that, uh, that plays out. I'm always just a little bit leery about new stuff. It's like, I'd like to this, I'd like for this to be around for a while. And I learned that in my career offering rejuvenation products and technologies, I've always had this six to eight year rule. 
really want something to be on the market for a long period of time so that we have the data to evaluate its safety and performance on the general population. That goes beyond just the testing because we have the real life world where there's lots of different variables. There's lots of different threats, right? In regards to oxidative stressors in our environment of air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and foods. And then what we can be doing to detoxify those things. And actually recently in my tutorials, I did two biohacking lessons. One of them where I actually took you into my home and showed you exactly what I use, what I do, talk about the price points and why to um, basically help you out to reduce that oxidative stress so that you have the best skin, you slow your aging and you have more energy and you sleep better and you're literally gonna be a better person the more pure you are. So if you drive an electric vehicle, that was a big sort of like roundabout rant. It's, it's really hot where I am right now. So that's why my voice is like a little bit different and things like that. I'm like literally like sweating and it's actually not a bad thing to sweat. Uh, when you work out and you if you sweat quickly that's actually a good sign and if you are exercising and it's taking a while for you to sweat that's actually not a good sign and i'm literally in my sauna for almost an hour i have the solo sunlight unit and i love it because i can keep my upper body out of the sauna and actually be in it for a longer period of time and it's really comfortable it's cost effective and you can plug it into any outlet. So say, for example, if you're renting or you don't have space for a huge sauna or the budget to allow for that, I really like the Sunlight and Solo sauna. It's just really well made. A lot of the portable sauna options, they just don't emit heat all the way through the unit. There's kind of like cool spots, but this one is just like, it's a dream. It's, I think it's perfectly manufactured in my, in my humble opinion. So the question Delilah has, is EMF protective clothing sufficient for this? EMF protective clothing is going to be helpful, but when I look at the lead researcher, Dr. Beverly Rubick, on what EMFs do to the blood, among many other things, is that really what she says is to turn off the source, to turn off the threat, essentially. And... But it's hard to do. It's kind of impossible to do. So wearing the EMF protective clothing, I think is a great strategy. Getting on your PEMF mat, if you're working inside and you're feeling like your nervous system is a little bit kind of chaotic and ramped up, get on that mat. It's just going to, I just find it really helps calm me down. And my mom was on mine the other day and she's like, oh, my back was really hurting. I wasn't feeling good. And then I was on the mat for about five minutes. This is the higher dose PEMF mat. It's a little bit of a bigger one. And she's like, oh, I just felt so good. I was just relaxing into the mat. So these are pulsed electromagnetic frequencies. So we have the electromagnetic frequencies, the EMFs, but then we also have other technologies that emit different types of frequencies in a pulsed way that are actually really helpful for our cellular function. It does kind of a similar thing to getting outside on wet grass barefoot, where it's just helping to balance the positive and negative ions in the body, because when that gets off, all sorts of things on a cellular, neurological, and hormonal level, metabolism level, just kind of gets a little messed up and kind of garbled and doesn't function as optimally. So you do want to wear EMF protective clothing. Uh, behind me, I also have the Leela Quantum. I also have the Somavetic. And what these help to do is just harmonize the frequencies around you. So if you're listening to this and you know, you're going through a challenging time, like what I have the last three months. Well, I mean, really, it's been like a year and a half, <laughs> but it's just been like supercharged. I mean, I'm never going to receive more than I can handle, uh, which you know, that's why faith is really important to really help you kind of overcome things and move forward and just become a more, a more mature evolved person. Like the whole thing about radiance is about putting the pieces of you back together in a more evolved and mature way. If you think you know it all, you know, nothing. <laughs> 
we have, we sh- I think we should have this desire to continually learn to be better people, whether that's looking after our health, whether that's our mindset, whether that's our relationships. You know, really my six favorite F words, I truly feel kind of encompass all of those things. So if you're kind of stagnant in a couple of those areas, it's going to affect the other areas. It's like the whole description in Ayurveda of radiance is that we have our body, mind, spirit, energy bodies, they're kind of our first four bodies. And then the radiant body is the 10th body. And it's essentially the electromagnetic projection, according to Ayurveda, which I think is a brilliant description of the term of the operating of all of your other systems into the world. So if there's something with your system, that's a little bit off, like your skincare isn't optimized. Yeah, you're using a night cream, but is it really targeting what you want to target? And are you skin cycling? with a peel, a retinol, and dermal rolling, because I think that's actually a way better and much more advanced strategy than just just using a night cream. You can do so much more at home. And during the pandemic, a lot of these companies really came up with really great at-home peel options. And I work with so many clients from various different financial backgrounds and that can't afford in clinic rejuvenation, whether it's non-surgical injectables or lasers or actually surgeries as well. But really my clients that I've worked with since 2011 that have the best skin, they are just balls to the wall with their home care and their lifestyle. They require less rejuvenation and they get a better result from their rejuvenation. Also because their toxic bucket is emptier and their collagen and elastin just reforms better when something's done to the skin, say, for example, with lasers to promote collagen or fade pigmentation. They just straight up need less rejuvenation. And I'm a testament to this too, with really being able to dial back the in-clinic stuff, which saves me time. I get access to this stuff for free, of course, because I'm in the industry. But thinking about this from your perspective, this is a huge money saver. It's going to take time to kind of learn these things and put it together and really hone in that customized routine, which is why the one-on-ones that I offer are so valuable. And to this day, no one is doing what I'm offering, which is the one-on-one. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to offer them with my time, with all of these other incredible opportunities. So if you're on the fence and you haven't booked your one-on-one yet, go ahead and do so right now over at the school of radiance.com and use promo code podcast 15 and then add the next layer, which is the tutorials and then add the next layer, which is the membership because it's not just EMFs we have to worry about. It's not just night creams that we have to consider. It's all of the pieces for the physical stuff, but then there's also the non-physical stuff. Like say, for example, you go somewhere or you're around someone and just the vibe is a little bit off. If you're really sensitive, you're intuitive and empathic, you're going to pick up on that. And maybe you have an exchange and it drains your energy. These are things to be aware of. And then also have tools and strategy to number one, identify kind of like a threat of someone who just isn't good for your energy, but you kind of have to put up with them and be around them with good etiquette to not make others uncomfortable. But really how to navigate those types of situations, conversations and people and all of that, that's where communication comes into play and also a high high level of empathy to be able to read the situation, identify what that person's perspective might be. And I actually did something really, really funny the other day. Uh, We have some family visiting from out of town. My aunt and uncle, my uncle that I mentioned before, wrote the book. I'm going to be interviewing him uh, because he's a natural leader. I mean, to write a war plan for a country is a pretty big deal. And he's just inspired me so much. And he's such a leader. And uh, we're going to talk about some cool things and super excited to do the audible for his book, too because the main character was actually kind of loosely based off me and inspired to a degree, like obviously not everything in there. But um, so it's fitting for actually my voice to be the audible for it, which is, which is really neat. But he said something to me the other day. He's like, oh, I remember when you were younger and you're driving by, you're like, hey, Uncle Bob, how's it going? It's like kind of excited and immature. And then we're, we're, we're sitting at, you know, having a family dinner. He's like, 
when did you get so intelligent? Because <laughs> he, you know, he was in the intelligence space and things like that. So it's, it's kind of a, a huge compliment to hear that. And I was doing some funny things in communication that I knew he was getting a kick out of. I was doing some negotiation uh, verbiage that I teach in the membership. And he said something funny. He said something really, really funny, but it was kind of a little bit not the highest word choice or comment. And um, he, he didn't mean anything by it. Sometimes people, when they say things to you and it's just a little bit like not quite the best way it could have been said. So kind of like, oh, you don't like it and it's not in alignment with your boundaries. I actually said to him, can you repeat that? <laughs> Oh, that was a that was that was a good one. He actually just smiled to himself. And, and another funny thing, this is just kind of a little aside um, that I thought was interesting. We were kind of getting attacked by all these wasps, like wasps were around us, and they're getting really annoying because we're here enjoying a beautiful meal together. And so I just said, I said, God, please move these wasps so we can enjoy a beautiful dinner. And then at the end of the dinner. I chimed up. I'm the obviously the youngest one. And I said, hey, did anyone else notice that those wasps didn't bother us anymore after I prayed? And they're kind of like, oh, yeah, you're right. So I said, thanks for that. You know, thanks, big guy upstairs <laughs> for removing those wasps. I mean, these are just kind of like little funny things that I do in my life, it just kind of makes things interesting, but it also makes my life better. So if someone says something to me that I don't really like, I'll kind of do like a move like that. And then they're never going to do something like that, like say something cheeky like that to me again, because, you know, I just won't have it. And um, just making our life more pleasant and just asking and then receiving what you're desiring. So kind of like a sprinkling. Yes, this episode is all about night cream. But since the EMF question was brought up, I wanted to share a little bit of those things totally off topic. I know you're all here for it. I know that you guys all here get the all these benefits, right, of not just doing the skincare and rejuvenation, but really the lifestyle stuff and, you know, communication with our loved ones and being in the right energy yourself so that you can have better conversations is really great. And uh, another thing that happened was there was a bit of a heated conversation that was happening around politics. And one of the things that I don't approach in especially dinner conversation or event conversation is politics, especially when I know I'm around people that don't have the same values that I have and the same perspective. And, you know, people started to really raise their voices. And for me and my nervous system, like, I don't like hearing really loud things. Uh, there's some nervous system regulation, dysregulation that I'm noticing because just with everything, um, the toxic bucket's a little bit more full. So more peace and calm is really conducive to healing and, and clarity and not having like fragmentation or just kind of like the energy being like a little bit sharp and off. So it was getting a little loud and I, I tried to say things, you know, four times, but I wasn't about to raise my voice and it was getting heated. It was getting heated over politics. This is bad etiquette to talk about politics um, in a group setting because this can happen. And then things can be said that are offensive and then it can create like a barrier and a block, especially if people are communicating. They don't really have good tools to communicate things or have a degree of empathy to see someone else's perspective. So I wasn't having any of it. I was getting a little fed up. It was a little too loud and I just wasn't enjoying myself. So I actually went over to one of my Tibetan bowls and I was going to tap it to like release this really beautiful um frequency because they sound so pretty. I'm like, I don't want to raise my voice, but this is just getting too loud. I don't like this. I don't want to be around this. Like either I'm going to leave or I'm going to raise my voice, which I knew I wasn't going to do, or I'm going to ring my bowl. And I went to hit it and I hit it so much louder than I thought. It was so loud, but as soon as I did it, everyone just was quiet and the whole vibe in the room shifted. It was really funny. My mom came up to me after and she's like, wow, that was like, 
that's actually really good that you did that. <laughs> and then my sister's like, well, you know, you have to be able to have these conversations with your family. It's very important. Uh, but for me, but for my boundaries, especially right now, I just don't want to be around people raising their voices and having heated conversations. No, thank you. Let's talk about something else and not things that are kind of, I think, in a way, distracting us from really who we are, how we can best serve ourselves and others, and the path that we're all on to make an impact. Let me know if you're finding this interesting or if I'm just kind of like way out in left field. But one of the things I do hear from a number of you is that you appreciate my perspective on things and that I have a unique perspective on things. Um, and I was actually hanging out with one of my girlfriends, Chelsea. She came over, we made a great dinner, and I actually um, did some stuff in my house. And then I just I kind of purged. I'll get into more details in the uh, membership community. And, you know, we just had a lot of fun. But she said something to me. She's like, out of everyone I know, you're the most in tune person. And I like I really received that. And what this in tune component comes down to is honestly, I believe just being as pure as possible, because the more pure you are, the clearer you can see things, the clearer your mind is going to work, the better your mind is going to work and the better you're going to be able to relay what your needs are and power, power comes from really getting what you want. And when you have these tools to achieve your skin goals, to have a great life, have a great relationship, like you're going to be better. And the better you feel, the better you're going to look. And honestly, the better you look, the better you present yourself, the better opportunities that are going to come your way. And people will legitimately respond to you even better. Like say, for example, you know, going through so much the last three weeks and like on one day in particular, which is actually yesterday, there was a huge shift in the morning with something like a really big thing uh, I made a decision on. And it's the time leading up to making a decision that takes the most energy. But when that decision is made, then it's about having that whole situation just kind of like flow and not hold on to it, but just kind of flow. And it's not about like just moving on and not really integrating and processing things, it, but it's this flow type of energy that's really important. And what I actually do on those days where, you know, there's a stressful event or just something is a little bit kind of extra, things are a little bit extra busy, a little bit extra movement and change is I'll put on a gorgeous dress or a gorgeous outfit and I'll do my hair even better, put a little extra time into my appearance. And what's interesting about that is the people I engaged with pretty much everywhere I went was like, wow, you look so beautiful. Your dress is so gorgeous. Your hair looks fabulous today. And that actually helped me feel better. So imagine if I kind of stayed in this like, oh my gosh, this happened, woe is me, victim mentality, and I just showed up looking like a bum in sweatpants, hair was disheveled, didn't do my makeup, how do you think that I would be received by others? You know, people would be like, whoa, something's going on there, or mm, that person doesn't really look like they look after themselves. So you can kind of like hack if you're not feeling 100%, well, I was still feeling 100%. It was just more like emotional, mental things. And when you just put that effort into showing up for yourself, others will show up for you. And I, this is a really interesting concept that I don't think I've heard anybody talk about, but I actually learned this from my mom. She was a night nurse for like 30 years and pretty much always exhausted got breast cancer, weighed over 200 pounds, and then obviously lost it, beat the breast cancer. But she always took the time to present herself in a really beautiful way. Even if you're not feeling great, do your self-care, do your skincare. Don't go to bed without washing your makeup off and doing your skincare and going to bed without showering. I bathe twice a day. I love feeling clean. Literally, I do my sauna, I take a bath, and then I go to bed, and I always sleep better too. The heat before bed is really great. And then in the a.m., you could do like a cold shower uh, and a bath and just get really clean. And keep, keeping your skin clean will actually help your skin cells out because 
when dirt, debris, pollution rest on the skin, mold, heavy metals, for example, they actually tell your keratinocyte stem cells to die faster. And that's not what we want. We don't want our skin cells to die faster. We don't want our skin cell processes to become sluggish. So that's why air purification is key. That's why bathing is, is really key. And your skincare and using retinols and stimulating your skin with dermal rolling to keep up with collagen and elastin. You're going to age, but it's what you do to kind of undo some of the signs of aging and then also support the aging process by doing things to counter that loss of elastin and collagen. All right, that's a wrap. I am like burning up in here. It's really hot. Um, just want to open it up for any final questions or comments. I don't see anything else here. I was able to answer any, everything that came up in this live session. And, you know, I'm really grateful you're here. And you probably think, oh, you know, this Rachel person, I'm going to learn about skincare. You know, she's going to make my life easier. I'm actually going to challenge you. It's not about just finding someone to support you and be your mentor. The whole point of the hero's journey is you find someone to help support you and be your mentor to overcome the challenges and then seek the reward. And I really think that in all of this, that the reward is, is beauty and radiance, especially for the women here and also for the guys too, to, you know, look more alert at work and not feeling like you're looking tired. And if people tell you that, oh, you're looking kind of tired, um, there's, it's a reflection of them. I don't want you to take it personally. But if there's something bothering you with the aging process, you know, book your one-on-one -on -one and we'll go over some of the options that are available. Of course, it's not medical advice. It's educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Love you all so much. Have a beautiful, high-vibe rest of your day. And I will see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.